Well, I still remember uh, from uh, a few years ago that uh, well, the heartbeat and some other issues uh, came out. And I guess uh, well, it's also part of uh, the topic. So, well, with uh, regards to that, there we go. Let's uh, get started. The thing is, I'm a, a BSD guy, so let's get started. Oh, does it? That actually works. Um, I'm a free to BSD user for quite a long time. Um, currently, I'm a committer in FreeBSD, uh, the operating system for ports, and I'm also a committer for ports and the base system for TrueOS, which is what I'm running here, which is kind of a desktop distribution, you might say, and Hardened BSD, which is FreeBSD with added security features. Um, I'm the maintainer of LibreSSL, OpenSSL, and MariaDB, and some other smaller stuff in uh, FreeBSD. And I'm the author of a very large, well, now, a large collection, or the authoritative collection of LibreSSL patches in any system, probably. Uh, in my, in daytime, usually I would be now sitting at my dreary desk at Philips in Eindhoven, playing an enterprise solution architect where I deal mostly with enterprise application integration. And lastly, I'm a volunteer for uh, our local Fiber to the Home uh, initiative. So we have our own fiber running through our village in, uh, in Heze, Stexel and Leende. And I'm one of, the, um, uh, one of the contributors to the toolbox and privacy cafe for uh, for bits of freedom, which is like the Dutch um, branch of EDRI. So the, the EFF, EDRI, those are the kinds of things that we deal with. So that is very short. I have for about an hour of content, so let's finish it in half an hour. <laughs> I want to talk to you all a bit about BSD. I heard there's actually BSD people, uh, BSD users in the audience somewhere. I'm not sure if they're here. Uh, BSD has many similarities to Linux. It's POSIX-like. Um, it's actually not so very smart. We have tens of thousands of ports that you can just run on uh, FreeBSD, just like you can on any other operating system. All of the familiar programming languages can be used, so whether it's C, C++, but also uh, Rust, Swift, Python, Python is a language. Anything just kind of works. Oh, sorry. But there's also some pretty big differences. FreeBSD is a kernel and a user land all in one. Uh, it's, it's pretty much indivisible even though you now have BSD Ubuntu or whatever they try. Um, it's copy free, so we have to deal with GPL mostly in the fact that we try to stay away from it. <coughs> it's a very permissive license. Uh, you can find it, uh, therefore, on uh, devices like Juniper OS. Uh, if you've used Isilon uh, or you know of Isilon that runs FreeBSD, uh, FreeBSD powers over th a third of the internet uh, outside of daytime because if you watch Netflix you're being served using FreeBSD. If you use WhatsApp you're one of the multi-million TCP sessions that run on a FreeBSD box because they run FreeBSD and they provide back to, your, uh, to FreeBSD but they don't have to. They will do that to make their maintaining their own diffs smaller but they don't, there's no like, uh, you have to provide all of your differences back to the system. Uh, ZFS, that was mentioned in a talk that were, I was earlier, that is absolutely friggin' amazing stuff. That is what you want. That is what ButterFS wants to be. But it has about 10 years of uh, catching up to do. Uh, ZFS is stable, performant, lets you do amazing stuff. So this system uh, runs boot environments, which means every upgrade that I do, if it doesn't work, I'll just roll back to the previous version in my previous boot environment, and that just works. So I probably got about five or six boot environments on here, and I can just swap to an earlier version that just works. Clang, LLVM, I'm not sure uh, if you're aware, that is mostly also an Apple uh, thing. 
it's supposed to replace GCC. GCC, the last version that we could use is 4.2. That was the last of the non-GPL v3 ones. Uh, we're trying to do away with most of the GPL stuff that we have. Uh, that's why we built with Clang. And last but not least, for people that want... Uh, so, we have no system D. There will not be system D ever, I guess. There may be other ways to do RC scripting, but it won't be system D. And the huge difference is the popularity. If it weren't for USL, Novell, and some uh, court cases that happened somewhere in 2000, uh, early 2000s, uh, probably you would all be running BSDs and not Linux. You can talk to, to me about that later. There's no problem. <coughs> Recently we have some huge improvements in BSDs. We have now package, which is like yum or whatever your uh, packaging du jour thing is, that you can actually run FreeBSD with binary upgrades, uh, which was difficult for a long time. Uh, we have FreeBSD on the desktop. This is FreeBSD running the presentation in some form. Again, ZFS, that is, that is awesome source. Uh, we have Beehive, which is a native uh, virtual machine environment, uh, which does not have any floppy drivers or um, pa parallel port drivers and any of that crazy shit that you get with KVM, uh, Zen, and whatever. And we can just run 64 bit <coughs> Linux libraries. Currently, we're at CentOS level uh, 6, I think. But this is all available. 32 bit libraries have been available for a long time but you can also run your favorite 64-bit stuff if you want. And on ZFS native, so you don't need to go doing strange things with, uh, uh, with uh, what is it? Uh, uh, with licensing. So SysStable? Sorry? SysStable translation? SysStable? Um, proxy proc stuff? No, how does it work? The, the, uh yeah, that, that is a module. So you can get your proc stuff uh, exposed in FreeBSD. Some things need it, but fewer and fewer still. So if you need to, you can still use PROC as you did before. But the native stuff is all SysCTL, <coughs> which is uh, yeah, which is MIMS-like, so uh, it works, more works like SNMP than anything else. So you have just a path that you follow to get to the information and also toggle things that you need to. So that, that's different. Um, I live with it daily. So I wanted to start with a short history of SSL, which was already uh, weak. We all, if, if you're anywhere in systems management, and even if you're not, probably you remember Heartlead somewhere in 2014. That caused the OpenBZ project to hard fork OpenSSL 101F at the time. Uh, they live log the code flensing and whatever they did of uh, OpenSSL, which was pretty cool. I had a good laugh uh, looking at that stream. And first and foremost, they started ripping out anything that was not 2010 and later. So Windows 16 has gone, OS2 is not a platform that you probably need, BOS, VMS, all the things that you don't need, if you have them, you already have a security problem. So why would you be running <laughs> the latest SSL stack? Right? And also they did away with many of the old insecure features. SSL v2, if you're running that, you have a, you have a problem. Don't go anywhere near OpenBSD because that you will be shouted at. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that was uh, dubious. Compression has been a problematic thing for a long time. And compress at application level, not at your, in your SSL stack. Um, export ciphers, come on, that, that's a thing of the past. Nobody needs it, and you can still find it. So, recent, so this is recent as of, uh, I think June is when I compiled this list. What you can see in red is all the old shit that you still have if you run OpenSSL. I'm sorry for you guys. That stuff just has to die. SSL3, if you run that, you're in trouble. If you have run credit card things, 
you have to be starting migrating to TLS v1.2 at minimum. There's no TLS 1.0 as of somewhere in the beginning of the next year, if I'm not mistaken. Export, MD5, SSL2, all of the things that you are having and that you still have if you run OpenSSL 1.0.2 is a security hazard. Do not go near that stuff. Then there was a core infrastructure initiative. They commissioned a, uh, um, an, uh, an analysis of the OpenSSL code. Uh, I think every quarter they release a new batch of craziness into the world. Some of that also is still available in uh, LibreSSL, but a large portion of all that stuff that they still discover in OpenSSL does not exist in LibreSSL because they just ripped it out. So you see system admins scrambling every quarter to upgrade all of their SSL stacks. Yay! So what happened to LibreSSL? They, they ripped out a third of the, the lines of code. Uh, they released the first portable version uh, in 2015. They kept on removing features, so later on they removed SSL v3, which was kind of a big thing because a lot of stuff still requires that. And they added two <coughs> nice features, one is libtls, which is a saner API into the SSL and TLS and crypto stack, but still relies on libssl and libcrypto. And you have an SSL enabled netcat. I'm not sure if anybody ever uses netcat, but that is pretty cool stuff if you can read <coughs> SSL enabled netcat. That it was basically done as a proof of, uh, of what they could do with libtls, and it is very good. Actually, basically, it means nobody can upgrade their uh, open their BSD netcats because now you need SSL uh, and libtls, and you need to bring in libreSSL. That's not going to go down uh, nice. So FreeBSD has its own share of uh, OpenSSL uh, security advisories. Open as a Libre cell was ported in a day, so it was released, and immediately you could find it in our port tree and start building with it. And we're currently at version 244, which is released a week ago, on, uh, one and a half. And there's a development version which comes out with the next version of OpenBSD, which is 6.1, and that will be uh, using Libre cell 2.5 branch. So, some Statistics, I said before, there is this stuff about uh, the number of vulnerabilities that you have. This is an old <coughs> metric, but you can expect a lot fewer of the vulnerabilities if you run SSL. <laughs> is it that simple? Well, of course not. If only it were. So, we have about 100 uh, ports. So, the port tree is a source based stuff that you do with FreeBSD to build software. That was the old way that you completely build your own environment. You yum, the package before package using binary uh, packages was kind of a pain. And that also included quite a number of the major projects, curl, Apache, whatever on here. Then came 2.3, which is uh, a year later. They removed SSL3 and SHA0 for your information. SHA0 is the hashing algorithm that never was. It's never been a standard, it was broken before it was released, it is still implemented in OpenSSL, and yes, projects use it for some reason because it's available. So that is a pretty stupid idea, but if you try to build software, things fail. And again, a couple of uh, more than 100 ports started failing, and Squid, HA Proxy, Python, Ruby, Curl, so basically anything that you would need to build an environment is failing the moment that you do that. So then there's a last thing which is OpenSSL version number. The OpenBSD devs are kind of gung-ho, so they set the OpenSSL version number to zero, uh, to, to two, so it's now in comparisons and if devs bigger than anything else OpenSSL will have in the next couple of decades, probably. So there's a lot of fun if you go into C5. Okay, LibreSSL, the issues. So if you go into fixing this stuff, 
what I found is that there's a lot of bad coding examples. And the worst part of it, they propagate. So somebody creates a stupid way to use the OpenSSL library because there's probably 10 ways to create an SSL context and uh, do the things that you need to do securely to connect to clients and servers. And people start copying that silly shit. So the API being so amazingly rich is actually one of the biggest problems of OpenSSL. There's too many ways to accomplish things and also then too many ways to shoot yourself in the foot. It's a loaded gun with a very happy trigger. Makes my patching easier because shit just keeps on repeating and you can just apply kind of the same patch for a different set of, uh, sort of, set of uh, software. So, the canonical way to use TLS 1.2 basically in OpenSSL is to use the SSL v3, v2.3 uh, uh, methods which will negotiate probably at TLS 1.3 happily. So in LibreSSL they added uh, TLS replacements for that, but that is only in name. It does exactly the same thing. Please, if you build anything, if you code C, use the SSL op flags. So you can create a context and then switch things off, like SSL bundle, uh, a TLS 1.0. It's just an operator on the context that you create. Switch that stuff off. And please don't use version number checking. Everywhere and anywhere, people detect the, 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 the capability of SSL to support something by looking at its version number, so that OpenSSL version number. It's not just that LibreSSL bumped it to version, the major version 2, it's also that if you do that, it becomes extremely difficult to deprecate methods because people assume the method to be there because the version is at a certain level. Well, that doesn't really go if you deprecate it because you're above that version, but you don't have that method in. <coughs> so, fun, fun, fun. Don't do that. Please. Do so. Use the flags that are set. So, SSL op is one of the things that you can use to, to fiddle with the protocol negotiations. But it's also hard defined in, uh, in the header files of both OpenSSL and LibreSSL, like uh, there is OpenSSL, no SSL3. That tells you, if it's set, the libraries don't have SSL3 available. So don't try and use the methods that are associated with it. It's clean and simple. Upstreaming. So the thing is, you can create 100 or 200 patches, but that's a hell of a lot of work to maintain them in your port tree because software keeps updating. So what you actually want to do is you want to push that back upstream so that they take ownership of your patches and next versions of the software include all the stuff that you need to build your software. Also, I think if you have more than a couple of thousand ports in your, in your ecosystem, there's a lot of old, dormant, dead stuff around there. And I think we need to rethink and probably need to start killing a lot of that stuff. Just, <coughs> just do away with it. Um, fewer and fewer fixes are uh, to upstream because things are improving. Also, uh, as an OpenSSL 1.0 coming out was helpful because I could already say journey alpha. Well, here's, here's my patches. They do what you need when you want to start using OpenSSL 1.1.0 because they won't have SSL v3 or EGD or any other thing. <coughs> so, if you find any patch, you know the maintainers of the projects, go hunt them down, tell them this is what you want to include in your software because this makes life easier for yourself as well. The FreeBSD wiki is where I maintain the lists and links to the patches, so you can find all that stuff there. Yeah, I need to do a bit of hack and slash in my presentation because usually it's on the BSD conferences and that makes life easier because they, it's a different crowd. So mixing OpenSSL and LibreSSL is kind of a, uh, a problematic thing. Uh, you always have these soft links to the uh, libssl.so, libtls.so and if they start mixing and matching 
where things happen, and not always at build time. There are also things that are just <coughs> blowing up in your face at runtime, and those are. <coughs> um, there's an issue with the support timeline of Libra. <coughs> OpenBSD is notorious. These are they, they don't take hostages; they just kill off the stuff. So there's a nice example on PF, which is the packet filter, which is also available on FreeBSD. At some point, they decided, well. We don't actually like the configuration language that we have, and it limits us. So we're going to have a completely new configuration language, and we tie that to a completely new version of PF, and that's what you're going to have. So FreeBSD is still stuck in the old version because of the version syntax. That is not nice, but they, they have a habit of doing things differently. So Linux as hell will be supported for two OpenBSD versions. Which is because they release on the clock every half year, a year plus a couple of months before the year when they said they have the first carve out of the new version. So this buys people in because you need to re basically upgrade your whole uh, software stack every time you bump the Libre SSL version. Usually things are removed. So that is no fun, unless you control your complete environment. You just build everything like we do with package infrastructure nowadays at FreeBSD. We have Poudrier, you just kick off the build. It figures out what depends on OpenSSL libraries, deletes it, and starts building. That is about, if I bump anything in LibreSSL and they start a package build, that triggers a rebuild of half of all of the packages that we have through one of the dependencies. So Python depends on SSL, so does Perl. So basically, and CMake then comes up, so the dependency tree is massive, kills everything. So how do we go about doing this stuff? So this is about ports. Now I'm going about, what does it mean if you really, really want to do without OpenSSL? Because in FreeBSD, the base system and the port system are kind of separated, and you have a way to select a separate SSL stack in ports from the one that you have in base. So you can still have OpenSSL in base for like IPsec in the kernel, but you'd have a different stack in your port tree. Progress. So somebody decided, well, I actually don't want to build anything with a base SSL. And he tried building it without it, that blew up because we found out more things depend on SSL than you would like in even your base system. So that was useful to build packages because you could, you could guarantee that they don't do stupid things with uh, linking paths and they will actually link to the libraries that you want. So a jail is like uh, what's now the cool thing LXC, LXD. This comes from early 2000s. This was invented on FreeBSD by Paul Henning Kamp. And we've been living with jails for like ages and we're like, well, what's the fuzz? This is, this is like cut cake. We, we, we've, we've been doing jails for uh, so LXC, LXD for ages and that is absolutely great stuff. I always use them. Then we went on. Making libraries private so that you can't use them anymore from the, uh, from the port system so that they don't see them. That is also pretty tricky because ultimately you will be mixing some things in the base system with some things in the port system. And if the one depends on base OpenSSL and the other one on ports LibreSSL, weird things happen. Libfetch is for one of the things that we uh, use in package and that requires SSL and uh, well, it just goes belly up, pear shaped, whatever you want to call it. Then the project was. Replace, just, just do away with OpenSSL completely, use LibreSSL in base. That was fun. I tried that and I was very fresh. This is two and a half years ago. I failed miserably because I just wasn't fluid enough. In <coughs> so Brent Cook told me, well, just, just use our, from our base system, use our make files. So sorry guys, this is not GNU make, this is BSD make or F make or whatever make, but not G make. And I wasn't comfortable enough, so I tried to do it with the regular build, the portable one, and that was not a very good plan. 
Then came Hardenby is these. So Hardenby is these. A couple of guys are, who are a bit pedantic about uh, uh, security. FreeBSD still does not have ASLR, which is a pain because we. I want ASLR that makes my system more secure. Hardened BSD creates a patch set and now also creates a complete distribution that comes with ASLR, Pro, uh, what is it, uh, PI, PIE uh, executables, uh, RHEL rows, so all of the kinds of additional features are available in that environment if you want to use them. And they tried LibreSSL as well because they thought that would be a good idea, but they had to roll back at some point and that wasn't pretty because something wasn't functioning. So they challenged me, they said, well, can you give us a build where we can just flick a switch, rebuild the base and world, and we have a different OpenSSL library? I said, well, I'm willing to try. Give me a bit of time. So two weeks later, I was able to use the build framework, so that the thing that that's uh, responsible for building the kernel as well as all of the user land utilities. So it would build in your in Linux style, it will build the Linux kernel, and it will build all of the GNU core <coughs> utils or whatever you have, like system D, probably, I don't know. To that, I added all the LibreSSL sources. I just un untar them in a specific directory which sits next to OpenSSL. You have the LibreSSL distribution. I added a knob in the make file where there's a, a specific make file that you use to, to fiddle with things during the build. And I changed some of the make files. So, actually, so with LibreSSL, it's transformed into MK LibreSSL in, uh, in our stuff. So, all I did is I wrapped <coughs> the original make file in a bit of if that, uh, conditionals and then actually started working with the original OpenBSD make file. So I was, I was amazed with myself that I managed to do that in about two weeks time. Weekends, right? Because I have a day job. So there was actually still so fallout in base, which is pretty amazing. So there's things like PPP that use ancient stuff that should have been deleted in 2000. 2000? Yes. That is what it was promised to us, but it didn't happen. Uh, Pearl Entropy Gathering Demon, there's a lot of people my age around as well. They might remember the times when you did not have a dev random. That is, that, that era ended in 2004, but you still have it in OpenSSL. Don't worry, if you want to run this on your system that has no source of entropy, you can still build your own in Pearl. Go ahead and WPA supplicants, so the stuff that you use to connect to your Wi-Fi, that has uh, actually checks for OpenSSL version 1.1.0. It's uh, I think it's maintained by Google nowadays. Pretty good product. So there's stuff in there. So now I had Beaver <coughs> BSD, but that's not a thing. So don't. Well, you can find it. It's on my GitHub. It is only the changes that I have to transform. Uh, FreeBSD into FreeBSD using LibreSSL, and that's it. I'm not gonna ship a distro that is not necessary. I have friends. So let's see, where am I? I have no clue where I am. Um, in FreeBSD, there's this thing on that uh, originally we always depended on OpenSSL in the base system, and there was a port. This is now gonna shift that we will be using the one that works <coughs> by default and, and try to hide the one in base as much as possible because upgrading your base system is a lot <coughs> more intrusive than upgrading ports so we have a jail system so like I was just at Kubernetes rolling upgrades I would just spin up some jails with different software packages installed and I could do probably the same so I'm, I'm happy so currently in our system we have uh, 102H, is that? No, that's not the latest, it's probably J. I'm the maintainer, so I should know, but I actually don't. Uh, we have OpenSSL Devel 110C, which you could plug in and see everything fail. Uh, LibreSSL 244 as a default LibreSSL. You can also, if you want to, use a 250, which I think will soon be bumped adding uh, TLS 1.3, <coughs> but that's not completely sure. 
So your build config, you said default version is SSL is Libra equals Libra SSL. Rebuild all your software probably, and you'll be fine. It just works nowadays. Most well, I would say if you run into ports that don't build yet with Libra SSL, you're using really wonky stuff, and you should consider switching to something more modern probably. <coughs> so, but be my guest. And OpenSSL is a train wreck so far. Uh, Python 2.7 doesn't build with it yet, I believe, so be my guest. Uh, I probably will, uh, I think there's patches coming along. So, I think Perl doesn't build. So many of the things that you need to actually build software don't build themselves. So, tough luck guys. Wait a minute. Uh, Curl does build, by the way, but many things do. So, this is... Probably so, uh, being a maintainer of OpenSSL 1.0 as well in, in ports, something we will be looking at for next upgrades because the, 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 the support timeline of OpenSSL is also becoming shorter and shorter with iterations. So beware. And, and still love our dear friends at uh, Red Hat for backporting every crazy patch into software that is ages old in computing terms. So I think I said this already, the links are in here. It's, if you want to, uh, this probably will be uh, published. If you want to find the patches, TrueS and Harden BSD, they have all of the uh, patches in their ports tree because otherwise they wouldn't work anymore because I need to use LibreSSL. <coughs> the version stuff I touched upon already. Uh, Fortunately, LibreSSL added a LibreSSL version number, so you can actually check for that in your make files, and that made my life so much easier. So that's cool. And the Fallout Imports is actually on the rise with 1.0 for some reason. Oh, fuck. Uh, five, minutes. five minutes? Okay. I'm always almost done. So, where are we going? We still need to, uh, to provide back to, uh, to projects. Hard and BSD and TrueOS, you can just run it in base. So this is running TrueOS, so this has only LibreSSL in the system. And you see so far it's been pretty good. Dragonfly BSD has made their uh, OpenSSL libraries private, and they use LibreSSL. <coughs> I, somehow I get involved in all of that stuff. Um, FreeBSD will be defaulting to OpenSSL for ports. We will probably make the libs private in the base system. Actually, LibreSSL in base somehow, it's, it's a community, so there's different viewpoints. Probably it will be default OpenSSL for a very long time. And uh, we need to upgrade in FreeBSD security OpenSSL, so the base OpenSSL provider imports to 1.1.0. And that's, that's going to be quite a big task, and I'm hoping products to catch up. So who benefits? Well, I think that everybody has benefited not only from the core infrastructure initiative, but also from Libre SSL because much of the work to, to, to make software compile without SSL v3 was done for Libre SSL. EGD is also removed in the default build for OpenSSL 1.0, so all that work has already been done by the people that were working on Libre SSL. So, they're actually pretty fortunate with that because that makes their delta to switch to 1.0 that much smaller. So finally they removed Desold, which they, yes, they announced that 15 years ago. It will be removed with 1.0.0 OpenSSL at the latest. And it was removed now in 1.1.0, so that is 10 years later probably. Okay, so... I've, I've disabled a lot of stuff in OpenSSL Devel that didn't go down very well because then everything starts breaking. So we need to, I need to tune the knobs a bit. And I say that you all benefit from this stuff. So a lot has happened since 2014, both with OpenSSL as well as LibreSSL, Boring SSL. We now got Bear SSL, which is the latest flavor, which is tiny, I believe. So last, I want to thank a couple of things and groups, OpenBSD for their awesome work on OpenSSL uh, gutting, making LibreSSL, that's Bob, uh, Bob Beck, 
Joel Singh, Theo Durat, interesting character, <laughs> Brent Cook. Um, there's more is from uh, iX Systems, which is kind of the, the also the maintainer of FreeNAS. If anybody uses that for native uh, native uh, ZFS in a uh, in a file sharing environment, but also TrueOS. I've wasted massive numbers of time <coughs> rebuilding the port street in uh, on their systems. But then again, they have large systems, so. I was happy. The, the hardened BSD team for all the trust in me because I felt very fresh even after 10 years of using FreeBSD. And I can say for everybody that is not con using <coughs> open source stuff but not contributing back. If you get into it, it's not as scary as you as I thought it would be. And I would I would I, I'm calling on all of you to start doing that. It's good fun. You get to talk at conferences like this, which is somehow a bonus because I get it you have to taste what NLUUG actually is and does, I have no clue. Alan Jude is one of the guys who's a massive supporter and um, also a promoter of ZFS. ZFS is really the, the coolest thing that you can have on storage unless you want to pay a hell of a lot of uh, dollar. And there's a couple of guys, some of my mentors becoming a port I need to thank. And there is a lot of lists of things here that you can look at. And if you want, we can go into this stuff. This is just a bit of fun of the, the stuff that I dredged out of the ports, uh, <coughs> the ports ecosystem that is kind of, okay, why EGD? I'll, I'll make this available to everybody. So that's going to be fun. This is the DES one. So in 2010, they released OpenSSL 100, and that's when that stuff should have been removed, but wasn't. So the, 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 the magic that you need to do is, is tiny, but still, it's, and, and it was, so they, they told everybody in 2001, thou shalt replace this with a different syntax, but they didn't for 10, for 15 years. That's fun. And the examples are not of, of, of obscure software projects like this. is previous one was Apache, this is Open LDAP, and Oh, this was a good one where OpenSSL was found to fix something that could have never worked for 10 years. So this is, it, it's about software process. So if you, have a, if you have a coding mistake in your software <coughs> that doesn't even ever build any system, but which was if deft out, so nobody ever tried building it, so why fix it? So response from OpenSSL, yeah, we'll, we'll make the exclamation marks into pipe characters because then it's syntactically valid. Yeah, but nobody's ever built this shit. LibreSSL, okay, this probably was never used, so there it is. Yeah, just delete the stuff. It's, it's difficult getting rid of things you know, in software land, apparently. Working for a big company, I've just had my first experience working on a What's it called? Itanium system. I don't, I had not imagined that I would ever have the privilege of working on an Itanium system. Okay, it was installed in 2003 and never updated, but other than that, I worked on it. And then there's the nastiness that goes on between projects, which is just like, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna register Libre SSH because they, OpenBSD started uh, Libre SSL. So let, let's do questions, otherwise we have no time. Well, we have no time, I guess. <laughs> Just one minute. One minute! One good question. Anything that I have not been telling you? Uh, chat. Can you comment on, on uh, BSD or Illuminos or other non-Linux operating system being used in enterprises? You work for a large enterprise, and are they used? No, no they can't. This is. So, if it's used, it's used in um, more niche type of markets. I, don't, I wouldn't even say enterprise. <coughs> I think you'll find at startups. Uh, so, Netflix does not use FreeBSD just for the fun of it. It is really using it because they can push 80 gigabit of SSL traffic from a single node that is delivering the video files. It's, uh, the, 
80 gigabit. Yes, you're, you're hearing that correctly, so that is possible if you can modify the operating system and don't have to uh, give your secret sauce back to the GPL people. Mm -hmm. There's a difference, right? Same thing probably <coughs> goes for WhatsApp that run multi-million concurrent TCP IP sessions on a single node to provide you all with messaging capability. Um, I would say that enterprise, as Philips, where I work, is an enterprise. They have scale nor uh, appetite to actually do things. I, I, I believe we use it somewhere in uh, in some network appliance that we put out next to the CT scanners or somewhere. I've not been able to find the guys in our company that are using it. So yeah, I. I I think it's now become a lot better with package. Uh, Beehive might be coming up because it's probably a lot uh, uh, better than other things. There's even companies that start using it as a hypervisor because of the lower overhead in the virtual uh, memory uh, manager, which makes things faster. So running Linux in a Beehive uh, virtual machine is faster even than on KVM probably. So there's there is benefits you can have, but you you have to do the work. So I touched upon that uh, USL novel versus CSRG uh, thing that happened late 90s, uh, where AT&T claimed, uh, well, so USL was part of AT&T before, the, those are the original creators of Unix, and there was a license dispute. Well, you might know one from IBM versus, who are these idiots? So this happened to BSD before that, and at that time the first versions of Linux were released. Having, having insecurity about the license of BSD just was a, an accelerator for Linux to come up. But actually, I, yeah, if you, if, you, if you see the things that you can do, so boot environments, booting your old OS when, you're, uh, when your upgrade goes pear-shaped, because if you really want to do crazy stuff like I do, you might find yourself with a system that doesn't boot. So I just go into my boot manager, I select the previous boot environment, which is as root, slash user, not user local, and slash etc. It all comes up, I can just do redo what I did and be married. So I, I, I would call on everybody, go and try it. So this true OS stuff, we, we've been borrowing from um, uh, Linux, so we have DRM 4.7 in TrueOS, which is the, it's not the rights management thing, that is the direct rendering manager, which allows me to actually run something of the additional ports and stuff. That is amazing. So now actually you can have a desktop that, that properly runs. And that has been released last, or officially released last week, and announced <coughs> last Saturday in Berkeley. <coughs> so last week we were in Berkeley with the Meet BSD conference and the B in BSD set for Berkeley. So that was coming home for uh, the whole project. And yeah. And the other, last but not least, if you want to have a community that's welcoming, that doesn't have all these shouting people at you, FreeBSD at minimum is a very nice and warm bath to land in. <laughs> if not, not being chewed your head off on the mailing list is kind of a... Is it for <laughs> Thank you.